Bonjour à tous and welcome to Learn French with Vincent. And this is Unité 9, leçon M. And in this lesson, we'll see les prépositions. So just to remind you, we've been seeing uh, first in the previous lesson la préposition en, then before la préposition de, and even before la préposition a. And in this video, in this video, sorry, we'll see not the rest, of course, of all the prepositions, but the main prepositions that we will have in uh, French language. Okay, so let's start now. And the first one that we'll see is pour, and pour means for. Okay, so we'll see two examples here. Ce café est pour vous. Okay, so ce café, this coffee, est, is pour, for, vous, you. Ce café est pour vous. Second example, je voudrais louer cette voiture pour deux jours. Okay, so remember, here we've got this conditional form. So, I would like to louer means to rent cette voiture, this car, pour deux jours, for two days. Okay, je voudrais louer cette voiture pour deux jours. Okay, second example. Preposition or next one, sans, and it means without. Okay, so two examples. Elle voyage sans ses valises. Voyager is to travel, so she travels sans, without ses valises, her luggages. Il vient sans son chien. Venir, here is to come, so he comes sans, without son chien, his dog. Okay. Après, you can translate it by after, okay, and then, je viens après la réunion. Venir is to come, je viens, I come, après, after, la réunion, the meeting. Je viens après la réunion, okay. Then, avant means before. Il arrive avant toi. Arriver to arrive, he arrives, avant before, toi, you. Remember, this is what we call this pronoun tonique. Okay, so it's you. Depuis means since or for. Okay, examples. Nous vivons ici depuis 2011. Okay, nous vivons, vivre is to live. Nous vivons, we live, ici, here, depuis, since, and then you put 2011, you just put the year. Okay? So, assuming the fact that we are still now in uh, 2012, so 2012, we could use this sentence as well. Nous vivons ici depuis un an. Okay? So, in that case, you can use this depuis as well. And then you will introduce un an, just because we've been arriving in 2011. And we are now in 2012. Okay, so, depuis un an. Derrière means behind. Okay, so, the example could be, le ballon est derrière l'arbre. Le ballon, the ball, est, is, derrière, behind, l'arbre, the tree. Okay, un arbre, a tree. Le ballon est derrière l'arbre. And after that, we can see devant. Devant means in front of. Okay, in front of. And then the example could be, mon collègue, my colleague, est assis, is seated, devant le directeur. Le directeur, the director. Mon collègue est assis devant le directeur. Jusque means until. Example, je reste au bureau jusqu'à 17 heures. Okay, rester is to stay, au bureau, at the office. Je reste au bureau jusqu'à, until, 17 heures. Okay, so you can see that here it's quite interesting because normally we should have this jusqu written like that. But then if you look carefully after that, we've got this a. Okay, another preposition. And then you remember the rule when we've got vowel and vowel. Normally what happens is that this final E uh will go away. And then we'll put 
sorry, we'll put apostrophe, so that's the reason why we get this jusqu'à, okay, and then phonetically, jusqu'à, okay, je reste au bureau jusqu'à 17 heures. Sous means under. Simple example. Le livre est sous la table. Le livre, the book, est, is, sous, under, la table, the table. Le livre est sous la table. Sur means on. OK, and then we've got two examples here. L'ordinateur est sur la table. So, l'ordinateur, the computer, est, is, sur, on, la table, the table. The computer is on the table, sur, here. But then, remember, or keep in mind that it's also possible to use this sur if we're talking about the wall, for instance. So, we could say, l'affiche, so, affiche is poster, l'affiche est sur le mur. All right, so it could be for la table or any other things like that, but then, then as well for le, le mur, okay, sur le mur. Avec, so the classic one, means with. Elle parle avec son frère. Parler is to talk, son frère, her brother. Elle parle, she talks, avec, with, her brother, son frère. Elle parle avec son frère. She, so this one is quite interesting because if you really want to translate it, so you're talking about a place, okay, but then you're talking about someone's place. So it's the place connected to a person. So let's see a few examples now. Je suis chez moi. So if you want to say that you are at your place, then you should use this chez, okay, and then here in that case, you will put this moi, so pronotonic. Je suis chez moi. Okay, so this is the first use that you could have. Okay, if you want to introduce this chez and then use the name of someone, it's possible, like here. Nous sommes invités chez Laurent. Okay, so we are invited at Laurent's place, if you want to translate it directly, okay? So that's the way we will use, if we've got a name and we want to introduce the fact that it's at the place of this person, then it's she, okay? And so it's it will work the same way if we want to talk about, for instance, here, the doctor, or then we can say le boulanger, le boucher. Normally we tend to use this she if we're talking about whether little shops or offices and traditionally or before the person used to live whether above or then behind or in this place okay so that's the reason why we tend to use this she okay because it is connected to the person more than to the the shop itself so il va chez le médecin il va chez le médecin contre means against. One example. Nous sommes contre cette décision. Okay, this decision. And it's nous sommes, we are, we are against this decision. Nous sommes contre cette décision. Dans. So you can, it means in, inside or into. Okay, so let's see now. Alexandre est dans la voiture. Ok? Alexandre is dans, inside, in la voiture, the car. Ok? Nous entrons dans le magasin. Entrer, to enter, to go inside. Ok? Dans le magasin, the shop. Ok? Par will mean by or per. For example, une lettre envoyée par la poste. Okay, une lettre, a letter, envoyée, sent, par la poste, by mail. Okay, so in that case, you get to use this par. Okay, it could be par uh, courrier électronique, by email if you want. Okay, je mange cinq fruits et légumes 
par jour. Ok, so in that case, it would be this per day. Ok, par jour. Je mange, I eat, 5, 5 fruits, fruits et légumes. Légumes is vegetables, par jour, ok, per day. Je mange 5 fruits et légumes par jour. Pendant means during. Il dort pendant le film. Ok? Dormir is to sleep. Pendant, during, le film, the movie. Il dort pendant le film. Vers, so you don't pronounce the final S, means towards or about. Je vais vers la station de métro. Ok, so I am walking, in that case, because I used to say je vais, so uh, I'm sorry, it's aller, ok, je vais vers la station de métro, so I go, so you can walk or maybe you could drive, or in fact, but then je vais, I go towards, donc la station de métro. Okay, or then it would be possible to use it as well if you get this sentence. Nous avons rendez-vous vers 15 heures. Okay, nous avons rendez-vous. So, avoir rendez-vous, it's when you have a meeting. Okay, so avoir, to have, and then rendez-vous. Remember that in French, it's not, it's not so romantic at all. You know, you can have a rendez-vous at your dentist, for instance. So, it's like we have a meeting. Vers, around, about, okay, 15 heures, okay, so you just want to say that it's not, you know, 15 heures précises, okay, but it's about or around. Voici could be translated with this is, okay, so and we tend to use it quite often if we introduce persons, so voici mon ami Frédéric. And then normally, you know, it goes with Voilà, okay, and then voilà will mean there is, okay. So well, I did make this little example, so I took back this. Voici mon ami Frédéric et voilà mon ami Arnaud, okay. So voilà normally will come after voici, okay. And that's it. I hope it was clear for you. Uh, if you want more videos, www.youtube.com slash imagier. And then if you want more material, then the website is here. And uh, don't be shy. Send me a little message to tell me what you think about my videos. Have a great day. Bye-bye. Bonjour à tous and welcome to Learn French with Vincent. This is Unité 9, Leçon I. And in this lesson, we'll work together on les prépositions avec les articles. So it will be, actually, it will be the first step into this big, big, big thing that we will do concerning the preposition, les prépositions, because it's quite important in French. And then I thought it might be important to, well, work on them at this point of our uh, learning process. Okay, so first here in this video, we'll work on a and then de. And especially when you combine these two prepositions with articles. So we'll see first the indefinite, so les articles indéfinis, un, une, des, okay? And after that we'll see les articles définis, le, la, les, okay? And especially we'll concentrate on the way uh, these prepositions will react in a way when they are combined with these articles, okay? So the first one that we will we will uh, discover together will be a okay and so we'll see avec les articles définis so remember les articles définis it would be translated in english as a uh, something okay but then in french we've got the difference between the masculine form so it's un the feminine form it's une and the plural form it's de okay so let's see now I've been making few examples. So I did take this parler verb to talk because it's quite interesting. You can use it with the preposition a to talk to. Okay. And it's also possible to use it with the preposition de uh, 
uh, to talk about something okay so that's the reason why I wanted to use this verb just to show you that well basically it's possible to use two prepositions if you want to express something different and then just to see how it will change if you put an article after that so the first sentence je parle à un homme okay un homme a man je parle à un homme okay I talk to a man. So in that case, what you can see is that you keep your preposition A here right after the verb. And then you put your article and basically nothing happens. Okay? Je parle à un homme. So let's see an example with the feminine. Je parle à une femme. Okay? Une femme, a woman. Je parle à une femme. Same thing here. Nothing happens. So it's actually quite easy. And then, have a look here. Je parle à des amis. All right. Je parle à des amis. Same thing here. You've got your preposition and then you've got, you've got the article. So, un, masculin, une, des. Okay. So, the good news is that if you use this preposition à and after that you put this article indéfini, un, une, des, Nothing will happen. No modification, no changes. You just keep them like that. Okay? Let's see now if you want to put this article défini. Okay? Remember, article défini, if you want to translate that in English, it would be the something. Okay? But then, as usual in French, we've got the difference between the masculine form, le, the feminine form, la, and the plural form, les. Okay, so remember, masculine, le, feminine, la, and then the plural, les. Okay, so let's have a look now. If we keep, well, the same verb, as I said, you know, je parle, parler, to talk. And in that case, you can have a look and you can see that it's been changing a little bit. Okay, so a plus le will become o. Like that. You write it A-U, you pronounce it O. Okay? Je parle au directeur. Directeur, translation, director. Okay? Je parle au directeur. Let's see the feminine form. Je parle à la directrice. Okay? Directrice, director, but the feminine form. Okay? Je parle à la directrice. So here you can see that, well, nothing happens, so... You still have your preposition A, and then you've got your article here. Okay, so nothing changes when you've got the feminine form. And let's see the plural form now. So you've got the directors, so it's the plural form. Je parle au directeur. Okay, so you can see that here you combine A plus les, and you will get this A-U-X, okay, and then phonetically you produce it or you pronounce it O, okay, so here, O, masculine form, plural form, O as well. And for your information, it could be, so I did put this directeur here, okay, it could be directrice, so it could be the feminine plural, it wouldn't change anything because it will be still this O, okay, so it will be for the masculine or the feminine Plural, it will be A U X O. All right. So, je parle au directeur. So here, for the masculine, je parle à la directrice. Here for the feminine, je parle au directeur. For the plural. All right. So, if we want to make it clear, then we can say that A plus le will become O. Okay. Then A plus la. Well, we'll stay the same. A la. It doesn't change at all. And then A plus le will become O. A U X. But then remember that phonetically it's O. Okay, so that's the main thing that you should remember if we talk about this preposition A combined with the article, les articles définis here. Okay? And now let's have a look at de. So, exactly the same thing. We'll see how the will react. So, first, avec les articles indéfinis. Okay, so, un, une, and then des. All right. 
So I took this parler again, okay? So, but that keep in mind that if we've got this parler and then we use the preposition de, then it's to talk about something, all right? So here, je parle d'un homme, all right? So normally we should have here de un homme but well as you know we, we've been seeing that quite often now it's not a new thing remember that a uh, here will disappear and then you will put this little apostrophe d'un homme okay je parle d'un homme all right but then the thing is that no major modification will be done because you just keep your de well the e uh, needs to disappear but then still you've got your article Okay. Je parle d'une personne. Okay. Une personne, a person. Je parle d'une personne. So exactly the same thing here. Nothing major happens. Only this E, uh, you know, disappear. But then that's the only thing that you should remember to do if you want to combine the two. All right. The tricky thing is here when you want to combine de and de. All right, just because we think that it would sound strange to have this de de roman, okay? So the thing that will disappear will be the article, okay? So that's the reason why we get this je parle de roman, all right? So in that case, de will be taken away, all right? So remember, de plus un will become d'un. De plus une will become d'une. De plus de will become de. Okay, so you will have to take this de away. All right, so let's see now how it will work if we combine it with les articles définis. So le, la, and les. Okay, as we saw previously. Let's see now the examples. The first one, je parle du voisin. Voisin, here it's the masculine form of the neighbor. Le voisin, okay, the neighbor. And what you can see here is, well, the result of the combination of de plus le, okay? It will become du, okay, for the masculine form. Je parle du voisin, okay? So I talk about the neighbor. So let's see now how it will go. So I kept this neighbor, but then here it's the feminine form, so it's la voisine, all right? And what you can see here, je parle de la voisine, well, it will stay the same. So you keep your preposition, de, and then you put your article, la, and you put your name, or your word, sorry, voisine, okay? Je parle de la voisine. Nothing happens here. And it's a good thing. And then for the plural, as we had for a, remember, well, for the masculine singer and the plural, changes will happen. So, je parle des voisins. Here we've got the plural form of voisin, so neighbors, all right? Je parle des voisins. So, remember, masculine, du, feminine, de la, and then the plural form, Plural, whether it's masculine or feminine, it will be the same, okay? So, de, okay? So, let's write it like that. De plus le will become du. De plus la will stay the same. Nothing happens. De la, and then de plus le will become de. Okay, so it was a little introduction because the next lessons will be maybe more tricky but quite interesting. Uh, we'll cover the preposition, all right? So if you want more videos, then youtube.com slash imagier and then more material can be found here. www.imagier.net Have a great day. Bye-bye. Bonjour à tous and welcome to Learn French with Vincent and this is Unité 9, Leçon J. And in this lesson, we'll discover together la préposition A. 
Okay, so in the previous lesson, I've been introducing the modification of this preposition a when it's combined with articles. Okay, so I would definitely uh, advise you to watch it if you didn't. Uh, and then in that lesson, we'll discover, well, the different uses of uh, la preposition a. And you'll see that <laughs> it's a long video. Why? Just because a could mean or could be translated in English with at, in, to, to, and then I explain you the reason why we've got this second to here, because it will be the from something to something, okay, so that's the main reason why we've got the, the two, uh, two twos, <laughs> and then it could be translated with on, and then other uh, meanings and other uh, uses of uh, this uh, preposition a. Okay, so we'll start with at, if that's okay with you, and so. few examples, the first one, so if you want to translate it with this at, would be il reste à la maison. Rester is to stay, okay, and in that case we would construct it with à, okay, il reste, he stays à la maison, at home, okay, il reste à la maison. Second example, uh, we could use this Conduire, okay, conduire is to drive, and then when you want to introduce the speed, okay, in that case it's 40 km heure, then you would use this A, okay, so at 40 km per hour. Je conduis à 40 km heure. Je conduis à 40 km heure, okay. And then the last example we could have for this at. It's for the price, like here, à 10 euros. Le prix, the price, est fixé, okay, à 10 euros. Okay, so in that case, it would be translated by this at, but then in that case, well, here, we would use this à in French. Okay, so, il reste à la maison. Je conduis à 40 km heure. Le prix est fixé à 10 euros. Okay, so, if you want to express this at, concept for these uh, situations, then you will have to use this preposition A. Okay, so let's see now the second uh, category we will have and it will be this in concept. So the first one, mon frère est au lit. Okay, mon frère, my brother, est, is au lit in bed. Lee is bed. Okay, mon frère est au lit. Second example, il est à la campagne. Campagne, country, countryside, okay. Il est à la campagne. All right, so in that case, it will be used, I mean, we will use this preposition à, okay. And then the last one, so if you want to introduce a town, okay, you want to use this habiter, habiter is to live, okay. J'habite à Paris. All right, you can see we don't put any articles, just the name of the town. J'habite, I live in Paris. J'habite à Paris. All right, so, mon frère est au lit, il est à la campagne, j'habite à Paris. Okay, so if you want to, well, translate uh, this in concept that would be in English, then it should be à with, as we saw the combination with the articles, if needed, and the modification, au lit, à la campagne, à Paris. All right, let's see another use of a, and it would be to. A few examples. Je rentre à la maison. Okay, so in that case, uh, rentrer, it's to go back. All right, so je rentre à la maison. And when we want to introduce this concept, then we should use this à la maison. Je rentre à la maison. Second thing, nous allons, allons is to, aller is to go, okay, à Marseille. Nous allons à Marseille. Okay, so we go to, all right, so in that case you should use this preposition à. All right, then... Il donne un conseil, okay, donner is to give, un conseil, an advice, okay, so he gives an advice, 
a sa fi sa fi his daughter so in that case to his daughter you should use also this preposition a okay so je rentre à la maison nous allons à marseille il donne un conseil à sa fille all right and so now whoops we'll see the second use of this to okay but it, when it's combined with the preposition de like here so de would be from and then you put something and a will be the to all right so je travaille travailler is to work de so from 8 heures à 17 heures okay so it's really the from to okay so in this example it's quite traditional or quite classic because we introduce the, the the hours or the time okay so from to let's see another example now il sera remember sera it's to be but the future form il sera en france du 15 juin okay so here you've got a, a date and if you look carefully You've got this du. So it does mean that normally you should put the article le 15 juin. And that's true, the reason why we've been combining the two and it becomes du. Okay, we've been seeing that in a previous lesson. So if it's not clear, watch it. Du 15 juin au, same thing here. We've got the preposition a, but then combine with the same article. So le, okay, and it will become au 22 juillet. All right. So in that situation, you can see that it's exactly the same concept, but as we use the articles, then we've got to modify the, the, the prepositions. Okay. So, il sera en France du 15 juin au 22 juillet. And the last example that we can have, ce train, this train, okay, va, so goes, de Rennes à Paris. Okay. And in that case, we just put the name of the towns okay de Rennes à Paris but then in that case so whether it's à 17h au 22 juillet à Paris so the concept is it's this to okay but then it is combined with de de and then remember de with the articles and it will change so in that case it, it would be to all right Another possibility would be the concept of this on. Okay, so let's see a few examples here. Ce film, this movie, est à la télé. Okay, on TV, à la télé. Okay, we've got this a here and then la télé. So télé, of course, it's for télévision. Okay, but in most of the cases, we don't use in French this télévision, the full word. We just use this télé word okay ce film est à la télé second example mon ami my friend habite habite is to live au so same thing here you've got this preposition but it's combined with le so it becomes au and then cinquième étage cinquième fifth and then étage floor so in that case you want to say that your friend is living on the fifth floor okay and in that case we, we get to use this a preposition Third example, il y a une horloge, okay, a clock, au mur, okay, so same thing here, okay, le mur, the wall, okay, but then we combine a and le and it becomes au, okay, au mur. Il y a une horloge au mur. So let's read them one more time. Ce film est à la télé, mon ami habite au cinquième étage, il y a une horloge au mur. All right. And now let's see all the other possibilities that we've got. Okay, so with verbs, because some verbs and it's only examples here because uh, we've got many verbs verbs that will require this preposition uh, a. Okay, so parler, parler a to talk to, penser a, okay to think about someone or something, arriver a. Okay, to succeed, to do something. Okay, so in that case, you should use this preposition a with these verbs. 
okay you will see that normally the way students do is that they will remember these prepositions and the combination of verbs and preposition little by little so when you will encounter a new verb with a preposition the idea is to try to write it or to try to memorize it and uh, that's the way it's, it will uh, it will go okay so same thing you can combine this preposition a uh, with adjectives for instance interdit a uh, or then prêt a uh, interdit it's forbidden prêt ready okay so in that case you should combine these adjectives with the preposition a uh, okay so it's possible to use this preposition a uh, when you want to express or to to tell how it is done okay so for instance when you want to say that it's been done it's been machine done or hand how do you say handmade yeah you use this fait so faire is to do okay but then in that case it would be done okay a uh, la machine fait a la main all right second use when you want to use this travel concept so venir is to come okay so if you want to, to say that you, well to come by something okay uh, here it's pied foot vélo and then motorbike okay so the concept in french is that if you're not inside so like um, a car a train tramway subway so if you're not inside then normally the concept would be to use this preposition a okay when you want to use this come go okay by uh, so you should use this a preposition okay but then keep in mind that in many cases french people tend to use when it comes to vélo moto well you can listen and you can hear uh, quite many times this en instead of a not really for pied because uh, well French people will still use this a pied okay because it's like a common expression but still for vélo and moto many persons will will use this en okay uh, officially it should be a mistake but then many persons are using it so just be ready and try to remember that it's possible that you will hear this en vélo uh, on their uh, en moto okay if you want to describe something, okay, so for instance, la personne au manteau vert, okay, so in that case you want to say that uh, this is the person who is wearing uh, uh, the green jacket, okay, au manteau vert, so in that case it's always the same, so a and le combine and it will become au, or then, you know, in that case it can be red hair, okay, so cheveux roux, uh, so in that case it's the plural, okay, a plus le, and it will become au, like that, but it's quite common to use this a, okay, and then you want to describe a person. So it's also uh, quite commonly used if you want to talk about food, for instance, un gâteau au chocolat, all right? So un gâteau au chocolat, same thing here, à le, okay, un gâteau au chocolat, or then un croissant aux amandes, un croissant aux amandes. So gâteau, cake, chocolat, chocolate, croissant, it's this uh, classical French pastry, and then amandes, almonds, okay? And then the use, so for instance, if you want to uh, make a difference between, because une cuillère it's a spoon, okay, so coffee spoon will be une cuillère à café, all right, so in that case we'll get to use this preposition à as well, or then une machine à laver, washing machine, so une machine à laver. Another option will be the owner, so if you want to say la maison, so the house est à mon frère, okay, so belongs to my brother, so in that case we use this être, to be, okay, and then à here, mon frère, my brother, okay, well, then you could use, you could say ce chien, this dog, is mine, so est is à moi, so it's possible, like we've been seeing here, to put a noun after, or then you could put a pronoun like here, à moi, or then you could put the name of the person. C'est à Eric, okay, does it belong to 
Eric, c'est à Eric. So it's a question in that case. All right. So it's quite quite commonly used this uh, ah when you want to uh, say that uh, the person is owning the thing. Okay. And then the time. So if you want to uh, use this rendezvous, so let's meet à 20 heures. Okay. So in that case, you should use this à and then you put the time à 8 heures du matin, for instance. The pain. Normally, we've got this expression. So when you say that, uh, when you want to say that, uh, well, you've got an ache, something somewhere in your body. So avoir mal and then à, all right? And then you will combine it with the article. So ventre would be like stomach, okay? So stomach ache would be avoir mal au ventre. So obviously this o is a plus le. So that's the reason why it's like that. Okay, ventre is masculine. So if it's uh, tête, la tête, head, headache, à la tête. Okay, so same structure, avoir mal à la tête. And then, in that case, pied, foot, au pied. Okay, avoir mal au pied. Okay, so in that case, you get the, the plural form. And the last thing that we'll use this preposition a for, it's when you want to say goodbye. So if you notice that probably uh, we say à demain, so see you tomorrow, à demain, um, à bientôt, bientôt soon, see you soon, à tout à l'heure, so it's in a few minutes or in a while, à tout à l'heure, okay, à demain, à bientôt, à tout à l'heure. So in that case, you should definitely use this preposition à if you want to say these things. Okay? Well, that was it for la préposition à. More videos are here. YouTube.com slash Imagier. And then the website Imagier.net is waiting for you. Have a great day. Bye-bye. Bonjour à tous and welcome to Learn French with Vincent. And this is Unité 9, Leçon K. And in this lesson, we'll discover together la préposition de. Okay? So in the previous lesson, it was la préposition a, and the lesson before, it was the combination of these two prepositions when you've got articles after. So if you didn't watch them, please do. It will be more easy for you. So let's start now. La préposition de. So we'll see the different uses that we can have of this préposition de, and especially the meaning in English. Okay, so the first use that we could have or we could spot for this préposition de is the partitive, so in French, partitif, okay? So a few examples here. Il boit du café, okay? Boire is to drink, du café, café, coffee. And then here, well, we've got the partitive form, so it's some coffee, okay? And then remember that we've got the preposition de, but then when it's combined with this le, it becomes du, okay? That's the partitive form, il boit du café. And then ex other examples, sorry. Second example, elle prend de la salade. Okay, prendre is to take, de la salade, some salad. Okay, so elle prend de la salade. Okay, first use of this preposition de, it's this partitive concept. All right, second use will be the translation of from in English. Okay, so a few examples. Je viens de Paris. Venir is to come, I come from Paris. Okay, so in that case, really, this de would be translated with from. Okay, un appel, so appel is a call, de ma mère, from my mother. Okay, so it's exactly this from concept in English. Okay, so let's see now another possibility. When you want to introduce this belonging concept, okay, then usually you should use this preposition de, like here. L'ordinateur de Samuel. Okay, so with this structure, you want to say that l'ordinateur, the computer, belongs to Samuel. All right, so in that case, you should use this de. So it's quite simple because you just put the word, well, the noun, and after that, you put this de and the name of the person. Okay, it could be also like here la voiture, the car of. The neighbor, in that case, yeah, du voisin, voisin is the neighbor, okay? And then, well, in that case, if you look carefully, you've got the 
préposition de combine with the article le, the, neighbor, okay, and it becomes du. All right. Other possibility, l'ami, the friend, de mon père, okay, my father, of my father. So it's really this belonging, something or someone is belonging in a way to something or some, someone as well. Okay, so l'ordinateur de Samuel, la voiture du voisin, l'ami de mon père. Okay, so let's see now another possibility of the use of uh, la préposition de when you want to introduce this containing concept. Like here, for instance, une boîte, a box, de chocolat. Okay, so, so inside the box you've got chocolates, okay, and then une boîte de chocolat. Okay, so the use of de, in that case it's quite clear, it's just because it, I mean, les chocolats sont contenus dans la boîte. Une boîte, une bouteille d'eau, okay, bottle of water, okay, and so in that case you should use this de, okay, but then obviously because you've got First, here, a vowel, okay, a, uh, a, uh, they don't really get along, so, as usual in French, a, uh, disappear, and you get this apostrophe. Une bouteille d'eau, okay, une bouteille, bottle, eau, water, a bottle of water. Une boîte de chocolat, une bouteille d'eau, okay, so in that case, definitely you should use this preposition de, okay. So if you want to introduce the fact that it's made of something then for instance here un rideau so rideau is curtain and then de lin lin is linen un rideau de lin okay second example une chaise a chair de bois bois is wood of wood okay so in that case un rideau de lin une chaise de bois. So when you want to introduce the fact that these things are made of something, then you will have to use this preposition de. Okay? And then the use. For instance, here, une station de métro. Une station de métro. Other possibility, une place de parking. Sorry about that, but, well, French people tend to use this parking as well. So, I know it's coming from English, but still you should pronounce it the French way. Parking. Une place de parking. Okay? And the last one, un studio d'enregistrement. Okay? Enregistrement is recording. Un studio d'enregistrement. So, as you can see in that case, as usual in French, as we saw previously, we've got this de, but then... As enregistrement is starting with a vowel, then a uh, needs to go away. Okay? So, une station de métro, une place de parking, un studio d'enregistrement. Okay? So, that's this use concept. So, what you use these things for. Okay? So, une place de parking, un studio d'enregistrement. Normally, we tend to use as well this uh, preposition de when we combine or when we use these uh, superlatives. Things. So, for instance, here, le plus beau film de tous les temps, of all time. Okay, so, le plus beau, okay, most beautiful, beau is beautiful, film, movie, de tous les temps, of all times. Le plus beau film de tous les temps. Okay, and then, la plus grande, grande, big, Avenue du monde. And in that case, you can see that you combine this de and then the article le monde, le monde, the world, okay? De le becomes du, okay? So du monde of the world. La plus grande avenue du monde. Okay, so for all these superlatives constructions, then remember you will have to use this preposition de, okay? De tous les temps. Du monde. And so keep in mind that it's also possible to combine 
And uh, some adjectives will require this preposition de, as we had previously. Some adjectives will require the preposition uh, the preposition a. Okay, and it will be exactly the same with the de. So, for instance, étonné, astonished. Then we put de. Okay, content, happy, de. Désolé, sorry, de. Okay, so as I said, and it will come after that for the verbs. Uh, try to remember them when you encounter them or when you read them, okay? That's the only way to really remember them. So, and for the verbs, exactly the same thing. So, parler de, remember, we had the example with parler. So, parler à, to talk to. Parler de, to talk about something. So, parler de, for instance. S'excuser de, okay, to excuse oneself. S'excuser. Promettre, to promise, de. Okay, so these verbs will be constructed with the preposition de. And that's it. I hope it was clear. YouTube.com slash image if you want more videos and then more material or then the possibility to send me a little message. www.imagier.net Have a great day. Bye bye. Bonjour à tous et bienvenue dans Learn French with Vincent. This is Unité 9, leçon L. And in this lesson, we'll discover together la préposition EN. Okay, so remember, previous lesson, we saw la préposition DE. The lesson before, it was la préposition A. And in the next lesson, we'll discover, uh, well, quite many uh, other prepositions. Okay, so let's start with la préposition EN right now. So la préposition en can be used to express this to uh, concept in English. For instance, je vais en ville, okay, at least to go, and then ville is town, okay, so je vais en ville, or then nous voyageons, voyager is to travel, en Espagne, Spain. Okay, so in that case, when you want to, well, express this to, concept in English, uh, in many cases, we'll use this en preposition, okay? Other use could be this in, for instance, j'habite en Finlande, habite is to live, okay? I live in Finland, j'habite en Finlande. Je fais l'exercice en cinq minutes, okay? So, I do, okay, faire is to do, l'exercice, the exercise, in five minutes. Okay, so in that case, and it's quite important, when you use this in, so en here, it will mean the time you need to make the exercise. Okay, so you don't want to express that you will do that in five minutes, so after five minutes, but really, if you use this preposition en, in that case, it is to express the, the, the time that you need to make this exercise. All right? So, in, like that, en Finlande, and then en, en cinq minutes. Let's see now for the countries. So, in many uh, cases, we'll have, so as you we, we, we saw in a previous lesson, we've got the difference between, for the countries between the masculine, the feminine, and the plural countries. Okay? So, in many cases, when the country is ending with this vowel en here, okay, uh, sorry, e uh, and e uh, and e uh, here, it will mean that it is feminine, okay? We've got exceptions, of course, because <laughs> French language is quite tricky, so we've got exceptions like uh, Mexique, for instance, it's uh, masculine, okay, but in many cases, it will mean that it's Feminine. If it's feminine, then you will have to use this preposition en if you want to express this in concept. Okay? En France, en Espagne, en Allemagne, en Italie. Okay? And now we'll read it with the liaison if needed. En France, en Espagne, en Allemagne, en Italie. Okay? So if you want to express this in with countries and only feminine countries, then you should use this en preposition, okay? And then when we're talking about the seasons, well, 
we've got four seasons and as usual in French we need to have one exception okay but then for the three others it will be en okay en été so in summer it is summer then en automne okay autumn and then en hiver okay make the little liaison here en hiver hiver is winter au printemps okay so keep in mind that for printemps you will have to use au and not en okay and then printemps is spring okay en été en automne en hiver au printemps all right another use of this preposition en is to express the mean of transports and then if you want to say I'm coming with my car by car okay in French we will use this preposition en okay je viens venir is to come je viens I come okay by car en voiture tu voyages en train okay and well we saw in uh, the the lesson when we when we saw this uh, preposition a we saw that for uh, uh, pied for instance foot and then uh, we saw that uh, motorcycle moto and then uh, bicycle vélo in these cases we use the preposition a okay but then keep in mind that well let's say that the main difference is uh, if you want to use this En preposition normally we tend to use it if we express or if we introduce after that uh, mean of transport that uh, will mean that you will be inside it okay so you are inside the car you are inside the train uh, if it would be a um, metro it would be exactly the same if would if it would be a tramway tram it would be exactly the same you would use this en just because you are inside Okay, so that's the reason why we make well the difference between en and then a. Okay, so you will use this a if you're talking bicycle or motorbike or then uh, by foot, of course. Okay, but then for this voiture, train, you will use this en. Okay, I hope it was clear. Uh, other use is uh, the languages. Okay, so for instance, il parle en espagnol. Parler is to talk, okay, or to speak. He speaks in Spanish, en espagnol. Or then, ce livre, this book, est en anglais. This book is in English, okay, en anglais. Other use is uh, when you want to introduce the material, it is uh, something is made of, okay. So, for instance, une montre, montre is a watch, une montre, en or okay so gold or okay so if you want to say that this watch is made of gold then une montre en or un bateau en plastique bateau it's a boat and then plastic is plastic so un bateau en plastique if you want to express the situation you are in okay so for instance to be late être en Retard, être en retard, okay, and then the other option here, uh, être en avance, all right. So if you're coming earlier, then être en avance, être en vacances to be on holiday. So être en vacances. So in all these situations, like en retard, en vacances, en avance, we will use this preposition en, okay. And then maybe the last use that I wanted to introduce is uh, what we call the gérondif. So it's a bit tricky because uh, we didn't yet see this uh, participe présent. It will come soon, don't worry. But then uh, I just wanted to be honest with you and introduce it even if we didn't so yet, uh, we didn't see yet the participe présent. So we will construct this gérondif. So the, the meaning of the gérondif is when you want to introduce so two actions so we, we would say action simultanée, so technically two actions that take place at the same time, okay? And the way we construct that is, well, of course, because it's the, the lesson, so the preposition, la préposition en, and then after that you will put this 
participe présent form that you don't know yet how to make, but we'll see that in a coming lesson. Okay? But then I will make anyway an example, and this is the example. Je téléphone. Okay? So in the first sentence or in the first part of the sentence, you say je téléphone. Téléphone is to call. Okay? And then we have here our gérondi form. So first you get your preposition en. And then you get your participe présent form, so marchand. Okay, and if you look carefully, it's coming from the verb marcher. Marcher is to walk. Okay, dans la rue. All right, so je téléphone en marchant dans la rue. So in that structure, you want to introduce the fact that you are making a phone call, you are calling someone, and at the same time, you are walking in the street. Okay? Je téléphone en marchant dans la rue. All right? So that's the technique we've got to express two action that take place at the same time. It's this gérondif, okay? And then we construct this gérondif with the prep the preposition en. Okay? That was it for this video. If you want more videos, then youtube.com slash imagier and then the website is waiting for you www.imagier.net. Have a great day. Bye bye.